Hi dear students, welcome to Social Science Online Class of 8th Standard History Chapter 2nd Geographical Features and Prehistory of India In our previous classes, we discussed about sources of history. Today, in this session, we are going to learn geographical features of India. In this chapter, you will learn the physical features of India. India is both a subcontinent and a peninsula recognize the neighboring countries of India the living style of man in prehistoric period and the stone age the geographical environment has influenced every country and people in the world. There is an intimate relationship between human life and the environment. The entire history of humans is influenced by geography. So it is necessary to learn about uh, the geographical environment uh, in order to know about uh, human history. Now let us look at the geographical features of India. India is a subcontinent. Due to varied physical features, climatic conditions, natural vegetation, and people, we feel the country can be called a subcontinent. India is a peninsula as it is surrounded by water on three sides and land on one side. India is called a peninsula. In the northern part, we have great Himalayan mountains. In the west, we have the Arabian Sea. In the eastern side of India, we have Bay of Bengal. Good neighboring countries are helpful for all-round development of a nation. We share our boundaries with the seven countries. They are Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and uh, Myanmar. Our country consists of 28 states eight 
യൂണിയൻ ടെറിറ്ററീസ് ആൻഡ് വൺ നാഷണൽ ക്യാപിറ്റൽ റീജിയൻ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ന്യൂ ഡൽഹി ഓൺ ദി ബേസിസ് ഓഫ് ഫിസിയോഗ്രഫി ഇന്ത്യ ഇസ് ഡിവൈഡഡ് ഇൻറ്റു ഫോർ മേജർ ഡിവിഷൻസ് ദർ ദ നോർത്ത് ആൻഡ് മൗണ്ടൈൻസ് ദ നോർത്ത് ആൻഡ് ഗ്രേറ്റ് പ്ലെയിൻസ് ദ പെനിൻസുലർ പ്ലാറ്റു ആൻഡ് ദ കോസ്റ്റൽ പ്ലെയിൻസ് നോർത്ത് ആൻഡ് മൗണ്ടൈൻസ് ആർ ഫോൾഡഡ് മൗണ്ടൈൻസ് ദർ അബൌട്ട് ടു തൗസൻഡ് ഫൈവ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് കിലോമീറ്റേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ലെങ്ത്ത് ദ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ഓഫ് നോർത്ത് ആൻഡ് മൗണ്ടൈൻസ് ദ സ്നോ ക്യാപ്ഡ് മൗണ്ടൈൻസ് ഇൻ ദി നോർത്ത് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് സം ഓഫ് ദി ടോളസ്റ്റ് മൗണ്ടൈൻ പീക്സ് ഇൻ ദി വേൾഡ് ദ ഹെൽപ്പ് ടു പ്രിസർവ് ദ സേഫ്റ്റി ആൻഡ് സെക്യൂരിറ്റി ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ദ ഹിമാലയാസ് ആക്ട് as a natural frontier and prevent foreign invasions they prevent the cold wind from central asia the himalayas obstruct the rain bearing wind and this cause heavy rainfall the slopes of himalayas have thick forest and are ideal for plantation crops mountain passes like pollen and khyber helps for trade and military activities they are the storehouse of many minerals they are the birth place of many rivers and waterfalls which are used to generate hydroelectric power they are also significant for tourism and religious centers the northern great plains the northern plains are also called the indo gangetic plains they are found between the himalayan mountains of the north and the peninsula plateau in the south the ender plain is formed by the deposition of alluvial soil brought by rivers which rises in the himalayas these plains are extremely fertile the ancient civilizations of indus valley and 
Vedic period flourished here. Many battles have been fought from time to time to establish control over this area. The dynasties like Gupta that established the control over this fertile plains also established the empire. Peninsular Plateau Peninsula Plateau is the largest, oldest and hardest of all the physical divisions in our country. The Peninsula Plateau stretches from the south of the Satlaj Ganga Plains up to the Indian Ocean in the south. The total area of Peninsula Plateau is around 16 lakh square kilometers. It is formed in triangular shape and bounded by Arabian Sea in the west. Beh Bengal in the east and the Indian Ocean in the south. The river Narmada separates the peninsula plateau into two. They are Malwa Plateau and Deccan Plateau. The Mauryans and the Guptas ruled the Peninsula Plateau in ancient time. The Peninsula Plateau has great economic significance. The reason for this is it has rich deposits of minerals. The coastal line. The narrow plain along the coast is called the coastal plain. The Indian coastal line is divided into western coast and eastern coast. The Indian coastal line is vast and stretches over 6,100 kilometers. The eastern coastal plain extends from Kanyakumari in the south to the Gangatic River in the north. The eastern coastal line is called the Coromandel Coast. The western coastal line spread from Kutch of Gujarat up to the Cape of Kanyakumari in the south. The western coastal line is referred as Kongan and Malabar coast. The numerous port On this coastline had attracted the Romans from time immemorial. Foreign trade was carried out on those days only through sea routes. As a result, port towns flourished resulting in the rise of powerful kingdoms in south like the Pandyas, the Cheras and the Cholas. 
the diversities in the indian geographical environment has also influenced the lives of communities living here despite of communal diversity there exists a cultural unity which binds all these diversities unity in diversity is the essence of uh, this culture